The first thing that we're going to do is demonstrate the upper cross syndrome that was originally developed by Dr. Janda, and we have, ch we have added a few things and changed a few things, but basically the cross syndrome pattern itself is the same. We'll have Tim stand sideways here, and it's characterized by these muscles, tight facilitated pectorals, upper trapezius, levator scapulae, sternocleidomastoid, anterior scalenes, suboccipitals. It's a good idea to remember these, to memorize the ones that are going to be tight, because then you can look for it. And you can, as you go through, you'll be able to test it. The weak inhibited muscles will be the longest capitis and coli, which are anterior neck muscles, hyoids anterior neck muscles, serratus anterior, which are protractors of the shoulder uh, blades, rhomboids, which are antagonists to the serratus anterior, lower and middle trapezius, and posterior rotator cuff muscles. That also includes the supraspinatus, which is really not posterior, but it's uh, also inhibited. Okay, so Dr. Janda recognized that one common strain pattern that we're going to be finding a lot in our clients is tight facilitated upper traps and levator scapula and tight pec toral muscles. So that's going to make that line go just about like that. You see how we're going through the, the upper trapezius, levator scapula, down through the pectoral muscles? That's one line. And then we're going to do the weak inhibited line. That's going through the weak neck flexors and down through the lower shoulder stabilizers, which are the uh, lower trapezius, lower rhomboids. So that is what to look for. And what, what that uh, syndrome looks like, it's characterized by the levator scapula and the tra trapezius elevating the shoulder girdle the tight pectorals rolling the shoulders forward, and the shoulder blades, we can't get Tim to do this, but really they spread and externally rotate, and it causes the head to go forward off the coronal plane, and then the AO joint, if, if when the, the neck becomes hyperlordotic at C4, with the apex at C4, C5, what happens? They're looking down at the ground. Well, the law of writing will not allow them to look down at the ground, so what does it do? It hyperextends at the OA joint. So no matter what the head has to do, the brain will always try to level the eyes, even if it means messing the neck up. So that's basically what the pattern's going to look like. Their arms are going to come back, but they're going to have that forward head posture, rounded, protracted shoulders, and that's where you can really see this uh, cross syndrome, 